Reinforcement learning, anyone remember what that is? You do it to dogs, you do it to undergrads. You're, what? Uh, like a what? Skinner box. Yeah. What's a Skinner box? Uh, just for people who don't not know. Yeah, so you have this little agent, it doesn't know what's going on, and it takes some action and transitions to some state and gets some reward, and it's trying to figure out what actions to do in each state to maximize its reward. It's trying to learn the optimal policy. But it doesn't know anything. So your one way to do reinforcement learning is called model-based reinforcement learning, and what you do is every time you do a transition, does that look a little fuzzy to you guys? Or am I just losing my mind? Um, every time you do a transition, there we go. Every time you do a transition, you, you uh, update your model of the environment. So you learn T and R as you go. And then you, you, you pretend you know what you have an MDP. And then you solve it with some procedure, like say value iteration. Now, the reason that I'm so not worried about what stopping criterion you use for evaluation is that your MDP is even like totally approximate and probably not right. So if you totally optimize the heck out of it, you're probably just wasting your time. Um, now one cool thing about using value iteration is that value iteration updates your use. And we talked about how to understand this in terms of um, percolating back reward from the future. Like after you've done one step of value iteration, you're looking at one step, two steps, you're looking at two steps. If you already are starting from pretty decent U's, that'll speed value iteration enormously. So as long as the MDP is, start, is changing slowly, uh, once these start to settle down, your current U's will be pretty good approximations for the current MDP. And you'll be able to get away with not very many iterations of value iteration. Um, which is nice. So it's not, uh, in general, it's just a dog slow method. But for some sort of online thing where your MDP is slowly converging to something, it's actually not that bad a method. And we, we use value iteration in, in conjunction with this just greedy, be greedy on, on you. You just take the action that maximizes the expected reward or expected value. Um, the fancy name for this is adaptive dynamic programming. You guys have probably seen the term, or some of you have seen the, the term dynamic programming from the algorithms class, but that term was actually invented by Bellman uh, to solve MDPs, believe it or not. Um, so anyway, so now we're doing adaptive dynamic programming by forming the model as we go. This is called model-based reinforcement learning. So now you know how to do reinforcement learning. Uh, we had sort of touched or hinted at it earlier, but I never actually showed the slide with this phrase on it. So now I have, and so now you know how to do it. Uh, any questions about adaptive dynamic programming? ADP? Yeah. Uh, this is assuming you already know the model or not. <gasps> no, you're born, when you're born, you don't know a jack. But then rewards, you start doing stuff, you are sampling the transition function, right? Because you, you get to see what state you're in. You do something. You go, now you're in a new state. And uh, so you're like, oh, OK, that's what happens when I do A and S. Oh, S prime. Oh, nice. OK. And then you're like, oh, what happens when I'm in S prime? Oh, reward happens. Nothing. I didn't get any reward. So reward is 0. Boring. And then you're like, oh, I'll do another action. Here I am in S prime, and I'll do, I'll do A2. And I go, ow. You know, negative reward just fell from the sky. I transitioned to a state and I got negative reward. So now I'm learning stuff about the model as I go. So you're building up a model. You start with zilch and you are building a model out of your experience. So how can you, um, how can you do for each state S? Like, you can't just jump to a state. This is, this is kind of like a star. It's all in your head. We're just planning here. You're thinking, you're just thinking, oh, OK, now that state S I was in, let's update my value for my estimated value for that. Oh, that other state S23 I was in, let's update its, my estimate of its value. So you're doing stuff kind of backwards. Like 
looking here's, here's backwards. Where I am. Here's where I came from. Update. No. 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 Uh, I mean, you should update your estimates for every single state that you've ever been in or that you ever know could ever exist. Might be faster, only update the ones that are reachable, but. So is this like you learn T and R in one phase and then you do that algorithm in another phase? Uh, no, you're, you're, you, a, a, a stream of experienced tuples are coming by you. Um, all right, so an experienced tuple is, um, I was in S, I did A, I went to S prime, and I got R. And then you're going to get another experience tuple saying, I was in S prime, I did A prime, I went to S double prime, and I got R prime. You know, so so this, this stream of experience tuples is going to be coming by your brain. And as frequently as you want, maybe even after each tuple, you can do a little value iteration. Update your use a little. You know more about the world now. Maybe you can make better action selections. So you're, you're interleaving planning and execution, if you will. Running value iteration is a form of planning because it's helping you set your policy. Make sense? I'm not dogmatic. Okay. It's maybe a little easier to implement if you just do a little bit of value iteration each time. Do a few sweeps through, see what happens. Um, it's sort of more fun to make your code pretty efficient because then you can actually interact with the simulator in a reasonable way <laughs> and like watch your guy learning stuff. Um, if you do like value iteration to convergence after each tuple, it's probably going to be a little boring. But if you do like one sweep through after each tuple, it shouldn't be that bad. If you maybe limit it only to the states that you've ever seen, then maybe that's going to be even faster. Yeah. But there's a constant stream of tuples. Life. Now, if you get a, if you get S A S prime, the first three. You get R, too. When you transition S prime, you get some kind of R. Is the R going to be the same as the first R? Oh, you mean, you mean later on, boom, dun, 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 then later on, I'm here in, in, uh, in S17, and I did action three, and I transitioned to S, and I got some R52 or whatever, and now I'm in S, and I'm like, oh, I've been here before. It's my crib. I recognize where I am. Now let's see, the last time I was here, I threw up. Let's try that action again. Uh, <laughs> and you do A, and who knows? Maybe you'll transition to S752. Maybe you'll even transition to S prime again. The way we've formulated MDPs, the reward depends only on the state you end up with. So you will end up with the same R. Um, it's not, some people formulate MDPs so that the reward is a, is a stochastic with a distribution that depends on the state you end up in, but uh, I just simplify it a little bit and just say it depends on what state you end up in. Yeah. Does that get to your question? Yeah. Okay. Whew. All right. Reinforcement learning. Okay. So that's model based reinforcement learning. Um, hmm. You can do prioritized sweeping, just like you could do prioritized sweeping for MDPs. You can do it for, um, for ADP. Get an experience, update your model, update what S you're in, or update S, the, 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 the uh, I mean, having an experience is a great focus for prioritized sweeping, because you're like, ooh, that's a state I just learned a lot about. Um, Update the model. You do value. You, you update the Bellman. You do the Bellman update for S, and then you do K updates. So that's actually a great algorithm. Do we force them to do prioritized sweeping? I don't think we do. Uh, grad students have to do. Sorry. Policy iteration. Policy iteration. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, we're really easy on you in this assignment. Yeah, if you don't want to implement prioritized sweeping, I guess you don't have to. But it, it'll be super fast because you, you're like doing only K Bellman updates per experience, but it, they're the right ones, the ones that really uh, adjust your value function a lot. Um, so that's a great algorithm.